Luroy's Pokemon Black and White Walkthrough, Part 11. Alright, so you leave the Pinwheel Forest, and then you were just like, your, your jaw just drops. You're like, oh my god, what is this? This is not a Pokemon game. Pokemon's not supposed to have these crazy, amazing graphics. Um, but yeah, we'll get back to this in a second. For now, just talk to this hiker dude, and he'll give you the Quick Claw. Now, the Quick Claw is an item that gives your Pokemon a 10% chance of attacking first in battle. So give it to your really slow Pokemon, and they might just outspeed your opponent. And this lady says that if you go through the Sky Arrow Bridge, you will get to Castelia City. So, this is one of the cool features of the game. Like, they're just basically showing off the amazing graphics of Pokemon Black and White. You get to go through this crazy awesome bridge, and there's like all these semi-trucks and cars underneath. Anyway, I wonder what they're doing. Are they like shipping all of the Pokeballs and potions to the marts? I don't know. Um, I don't really know how these trucks are actually supposed to get anywhere because, like, the end of this road is a forest, so it's not like they can go through the pinwheel forest, but whatever. Um, they don't need a reason to do what they do in Pokemon. And yeah, you get this cool boat underneath, and I think this guy's in the exact center of the bridge. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> they changed the angle here. I always like to go back and forth right where it changes, just to make the screen go all crazy. Um, but yeah, when you get through this bridge, you get to Castelia City, which is basically like the New York City of the Pokemon world. Like, there's all these skyscrapers, and there's like a million people, and it's pretty awesome. I've been waiting so long for Nintendo to make a city like this, and they finally did it, so... Castelia City is one of the coolest cities in any Pokemon game. Um, anyways, we finally get there, and... Yeah, of course, if you go back, it leads right to the Penwheel Forest. That's where we came from last time, but... Yeah, let's check out the city. There is definitely a ton of stuff in here, so um, it could take a video or two to actually cover everything. Um, let's just start by going down here. This is probably the first thing you should do when you get into the city, because you can get an evolutionary stone if you come onto this little dock over here. So talk to this dude with the glasses, and he will give you either a leaf stone, a fire stone, or a water stone, depending on the monkey that you choose. So since I picked Pansage earlier on in the game, or since I got a Pansage earlier on in the game, I'm going to get the leaf stone. Um, now, a lot of people wonder when they should actually give their Pokemon the Leaf, Fire, or Water, water Stone. Um, keep in mind, once you evolve the, your Pokemon with the stones, they will not learn any more moves leveling up. So you want to make sure you get all the leveling up moves before you use your stone. Um, the level I would recommend for the Monkey Pokemon is 22. After 22, they learn like their best, um, their best attack, and after that, there's really nothing worth waiting around for. So I would just say get your Pokemon to level 22 if you have the Monkey teach them their new move, and then just evolve them straight from there. It's You're going to be happy if you do that, because if you wait around to like level 40 or whatever to learn Crunch, it's just not going to be worth it. Um, especially since you can get the Knight Slash TM anyways, it's just as good. Um, yeah, over on this little dock, there's the giant cruise ship called the Royal Unova, but you can't actually go on here until after you beat the game, so don't worry about it right now. Um, we are going to head into the Pokemon Center, though, and by the way, if you guys saw, there's like a cool sign on top of the Pikachu. Um, but yeah, you might be wondering why I'm going into the Pokemon Center. There's actually a dude up here. Um, if you've done a lot of trades through Wi-Fi, this guy will give you some cool items. I haven't done any because I'm just playing through the game for fun, but if you've done a lot of trades, you can get some pretty cool items. I think if you've done up to 50 trades, you can get, like, a Master Ball, so... If you've done a lot of Wi-Fi trades, talk to that dude. And this lady, for some reason, is standing in front of the Pokemon Center lady, but... Um, I don't know, I think she just gives you some worthless information. Oh yeah, she's talking about the globe on the second floor, so just random shenanigans about Wi-Fi and whatnot, so learn more about it if you want, but I'm going to move on here, so um, all the streets here have a name, this is Castelia Street, um, so we're going to go through all of them, there's definitely a bunch of stuff to do, and check out all these people walking around, like, for once in a Pokemon City, there's actually, like, people walking around doing stuff. It's like a revolution, because in every other game, there's just, every other city even, people are just standing in one place for like ever, but here in Castelia City, people are actually going places. Um, yeah, there's nothing really that important in this building, but you can get this Zerua put into your Pokedex. Um, it's an event Pokemon, which you can't normally get through the game, so the only way to really, well, you'll still get it on your Pokedex later on, but if you want to get it in your Pokedex right now, that's what you gotta do. Anyways, then go up to the 22nd floor on the elevator. Um... Yeah, thank goodness we don't actually have to go through every floor and every skyscraper. They just pick one or two random floors we can go up to. Um, if you talk to this guy after you've filled up your Pokedex, he will give you a prize. I think it's just like a certificate or something worthless like that, so not that big of a deal. Um, this guy says he's Snorlax, so that's kind of weird. But this dude right here, if you've beaten the Elite Four, you can come back and battle him. And it's actually a very tough battle. He's going to have Pokemon like up in the level 70s. 
like 75-ish, so keep that in mind. Go and fight him after you beat the Elite Four if you want a nice challenge. Um, yeah, this whole building here is like the Game Freak area, and there's one of these in every game where there's just like all the people that made the Pokemon game are just chilling up in an office somewhere. Um, so yeah, they just had to throw that in there. Nothing really too important though. Um, but if you cross the street, you can go to this little building over here. Yeah, you'll notice most of these skyscrapers you can't actually go into, but when you can go into one, you should probably check it out. Uh, this lady right here is the massage lady. She will massage any of your Pokemon once a day, and it basically just boosts up their happiness. So if you have a Pokemon that evolves through evolution, like you're trying to get a Leovani, you'll definitely want to do that. Also, if you have the move Return on your Pokemon, like the TM for Return, that move does more damage if your happiness is higher, so it's not a bad idea giving your Pokemon some good happiness. One cool strategy is to just save your game and keep resetting your DS clock to the next day, then you can just, like, get 20 massages in a row, then max out your happiness, but yeah. If you want to be cheap, you can go ahead and do that. Anyways, one of these people gives you a TM, so I think it's the hiker dude, actually. Um, it's actually TM44 for rest, and basically what that move does is it puts your Pokemon to sleep, but it also heals up all their hit points and heals any status problems. And then you go to sleep for two turns. I think it's not really that great in-game because you could always just use potions or whatever, but um, it's, it's kind of useful in Wi-Fi battles, so yeah, whatever. You can use TMs unlimitedly, so it's not really a big deal if you want to try it out on something. Um, anyways, that is it for everything in this building, and I think that's it for this entire street, so yeah. And when you run through here, people just say random stuff, like, ouch, oh no. <laughs> Um, anyways, up here is the plaza area. It's funny how there's just like a million people just walking around over there and you get up here and it's just empty. Um, but yeah, right here is the vending machine. So grab yourself some soda pop or lemonade. Um, I would highly recommend really stocking up on these items because they're really great for healing and they're pretty cheap compared to super potions. I will probably do it later on when I'm not recording. Um, anyways, this person is dancing in front of this fountain here. Go ahead and talk to them. And uh, yeah, if you say yes, they will challenge you to a fight. And there's actually three of these dancers throughout the city, and if you beat all of them, you can get an amulet coin, which is a pretty nice item, so you might as well do it. And yeah, they just have all these monkey Pokemon, so... Um, yeah, if you didn't guess, one of them has the grass type, one of them has the fire type, and one has the water type, so... It's really not that tough, though, they're only at level 21, so... Yeah, go ahead and fight all these guys, and you can get that amulet coin. Um, yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of actual trainer battles you can do. In Castellia City, there's um, these guys, of course, and then there's one whole building just full of trainers that you can fight, so... Yeah, we'll get to that later on, though. Anyways, he's gonna go tell you to find the rest of the dancers, so we're gonna do that, and by the end of the video, hopefully, we've fought them all. Um, now let's head up here. This is... I guess the rest of the streets are below the plaza, but there's some more stuff up here. Um, let's go to this building on the right side, I think. Oh yeah, this actually leads to Route 6 if you go through to the very end. Um, you can't get through Route 6 yet, but you can actually fight some wild Pokemon in there. Um, and there are some pretty good ones to catch if you want to check it out, but we'll do that later. Anyways, talk to this dude, and he's going to have to check you. It's like elevator security or something. Um, yeah, you're not allowed to have any suspicious items if you want to go up the elevator. I don't know what you would possibly bring on an elevator that's going to be, like, disruptive, but whatever. There's some party going on up here, so um, I guess that's what the deal is. They don't want me bringing some crazy stuff here to the party. Um... Oh yeah, this is one of those dancers, but you actually can't fight them, so I don't know what he's really doing. He's not one of the dancers you actually have to worry about. Um, all you have to worry about down here is this lady, because she will give you an item, which is the TM for Attract. And Attract, if you have a male Pokemon, it will work on female Pokemon, and if you have a female, it will work on male Pokemon, and it basically infatuates the opponent, which is kind of nice. And these people talk in other languages, so I have no idea what they're saying. Um, yeah, if anyone has any idea how to speak these languages, you should tell me what they're saying. Anyways, I've asked my Pokemon to use Sing instead of using an alarm clock, but I can't get up at all, I don't know why! Oh wow, you're so stupid. So instead of, instead of an alarm clock, you're having your Pokemon use Sing, which just puts you back to sleep. Oh, and this person tells a funny joke. Her boyfriend wouldn't get out of the bed, so he used Wake Up Slap on her. Or she used Wake Up Slap on him, <laughs> that makes more sense. Anyways, whatever, there's really nothing else to do here other than to get that TM. Yeah, that's what you should do. If, if someone can't fall asleep in your house, just get your Pokemon to use Wake Up Slap on them, and that'll surely wake them up. Um, but seriously, how dumb are you? Instead of an alarm clock, you're just having your Pokemon use Sing, which puts you back to sleep. How stupid can you be? 
Um, anyways, across the street here, you can talk to this dude. He is the name writer, so if you screwed up on your nickname and you misspelled it, or you just thought of something stupid, um, you can change it by talking to him. And here's a Pikachu from another country. Look, its name is like something in another language. What is that, like German? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting because you're kind of like confused. Like, why is there a Pikachu in Unova? That's not right, but apparently this guy got it through a trade from someone else, so that's why it has this random name, like Gustendite or something. I don't know. I'm terrible at other languages. Anyways, um... Oh yeah, this I'm not really sure about. This person, I think if you have the Sea Gear, um, she'll do some fun stuff for you. It's not anything I really know about, to be honest, but because I never use the Sea Gear, but if you have your Sea Gear on, there's something like called the Feeling Check. I'm not really sure what it is, though. It's not that important, though, so don't worry about it. Yeah, that's right. I don't know every last detail about this game. Um, but what I do know is that you should talk to this dude right here, because he has a really nice item that you can grab. So he's going to check your Pokedex, and you'll get the Eviolite. The Eviolite is like the greatest item ever. Basically, if you have a Pokemon that is not evolved yet, give them the Eviolite, and their defense and special defense will go up 50%. So if you have some Pokemon that takes forever to evolve, like it's not going to evolve until like level 40, give them the Eviolite, and their defense just gets a giant boost. Um, defense and special defense, so it's a really nice item. Definitely give it to your unevolved Pokemon that have low defenses, because it will help you out a ton. And I don't know why I just walked back into the building, so whatever. Um, yeah, we're not going to go to Route 6 up north yet. We'll come back to that later after we're done with Castelia City. But like I said, there's a lot of good Pokemon you can catch up there. Um, let's actually go back into the um, big part of the city down here. There's three more streets we can go down, so let's go to this one over here. What is this one? Mode Street. All right, so there's a couple things to do in here. Um... Now, if you're playing on a Tuesday, you can get one of these awesome ice cream cones, which everyone in the entire city is talking about. Um, if you come any other day but Tuesday, they will be sold out. But if you come on a Tuesday, you can come to the back of the line. And I actually just set my DS clock to a Tuesday so I could do this. But, yeah, you can go to the back of the line, and then you can wait your turn. Like, you seriously just have to wait for everyone to buy their ice cream. But, yeah, basically these um, uh, ice cream codes you can get here are... They're, they're basically full heals. They will um, heal up any status problem for your Pokemon. And they're only $100, so it's a great buy. But unfortunately, you can only get one per day on a Tuesday. And if it's the winter, you can't get them. So you pretty much can't stock up on these unless you have, like, I don't know, a month to just waste just restarting your game and switching the clock to Tuesday. Um, if, if, if you have that kind of time on your hands, you might as well do it. But yeah, you can only get one, so... Kind of disappointing, but yeah, those are the amazing ice cream cones that everyone talks about. Um, so don't worry about it if it's not a Tuesday, it's not that big of a deal. If you come in here and talk to this clown dude, he will have a random type. Today it's going to be a rock type, so if you have a Pokemon that matches the random type that he tells you, you can get a berry, and luckily I actually have a rock type, so... Yeah, when I did it yesterday, it was like dragon, so I was like, yeah, whatever, but yeah, today I can actually pick a berry, so let's grab this Chesto berry, and that's that. So yeah, don't be too disappointed if you don't happen to have the same type he asks for, because it's only one berry, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, that's a little art studio. Apparently the gym leader here is like some amazing artist that everyone wants to like model their art after. And why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep going back inside the buildings? Um, I think that's it for Mode Street, so two more streets. I think we've already covered like the main stuff in here. There's just a couple other things to do. Um... Oh yeah, this right here is the Battle Company. This is the place I was talking about before that's just filled with Pokemon trainers. And this is going to take an entire video to cover because there's like so many trainers in here. There's no way I can fit it into this video, so we'll come back to that later. Um, this right here is a narrow street. It's basically just a long alleyway. And oh yeah, this guy's just going to pop out of nowhere and give you this TM for Flash. It's kind of scary. You're just not even expecting it, but he just pops out. You like think someone's going to mug you. Um, so yeah, TM70 Flash, which can lower the opponent's accuracy. Um, kind of like Sand Attack, so yeah, that's that. And I don't know who would put a diner in the middle of this, like, mysterious alleyway, but apparently this guy built one here, so, or it's a cafe, whatever. Cafe, diner, same thing. So yeah, he's gonna give you a lemonade. And this just seems like one of those places, like, depressed people go to, like, I don't know, drink away their problems or something, I don't know, but... Here's another one of those dancer people, so let's get our team set. I think this person uses the water type monkey, so let's put our pan sage up front and fight him. So, yeah, this will be the second of the three dancers. The second of the dancing trio. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, every once in a while you just find random guys breakdancing in alleys behind garbage cans. 
Um, yeah, Dancer Edmund, he's got a pan pour. Good thing I got the right one then, so. Yeah, pan save can take care of this thing. And actually, I think I forgot to put the Miracle Seed on Pan Sage. It's annoying. Because Vine Whip is such a weak move. I mean, uh. But like I said earlier, at level 22, I will learn a very good move. Um, for Pan Sage, it's Seed Bomb. Pan Seer gets Incinerate, and Pan Poor um, is the lucky one and gets the most powerful Scald, so. Um, yeah, the, they vary in power, but overall, they're still pretty good moves at level 22, so. That's what I'm looking forward to, because Seed Bomb is, like, twice as powerful as Vine Whip. And yeah, I really should have remembered to put the Miracle Seed on him, because that would have boosted up those grass stay moves. But whatever, I'll remember that for the next video. Um, yeah, so now this guy's going to disappear and go back to the plaza. So that's pretty much it. And these guys right here are just, like, the shadiest people. This dude here is just smirking. And I just talked to you three times. And this guy here is like, hee 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 hee. It's like, what are you guys doing? Like two bald, suspicious looking guys in an alleyway just smirking and laughing, like just facing each other. Like, what are they doing? I don't know. I don't think I want to know either. It's just really creepy. Um, anyways, this is the last street over here. I think this street is just called like street with a gym or something stupid. Like they couldn't think of anything creative. Um, let's see, this building I think is empty right now. You will come back here later though, because um, Team Plasma is going to be here later on. Oh, spoilers! Um, but yeah, this is obviously the street with a gym, because that's what it's called, and I will not go in the gym yet. You can't actually enter the gym, there's some other stuff you got to take care of, so we'll talk about that in a later video. Basically, Team Plasma is going to come spoil all the fun, so yeah. Alright, this right here is the um, random, oh yeah, Passerby Analytics HQ. Basically a place where you can go waste your time and get some worthless items. Like seriously, you can go in there and take all these surveys and it'll take like an hour to do and then you get like some terrible items. It's like not even worth it. So yeah, if you have a bunch of time in your hands, go in there and you can do all this random survey stuff and it's really just not worth it in my opinion. Um, last up is the third of the dancing trio. So let's put Mr. Toad up front because all that's left is the fire monkey. Um, but yeah, that analytical... HQ place or whatever it's called that place was like the first time I played I did I sat there and did so many surveys And I like had to tell them my favorite sport and my favorite class in school And all I got was like a lemonade or a soda pop or something stupid like that. I was like seriously I wasted all my time for that crap um, So yeah, if you want to you can check it out, but not anything you actually have to do All right, so um, we got this pants here here. It's gonna use yawns um, Yeah, we're gonna kill it with bubble beam anyway, so See you later, Panseer. It was nice knowing you. Not really, though. <laughs> All right, so you're going to go down, and that should get Mr. Toad up to level 19. Yep, there we go. All right, so I think we basically covered all the main stuff in Castelia. Um, we still have that giant building full of trainers, but we got through, like, all the buildings and stuff. So that's good. Um, yeah, these little docks down here, whatever they call them, there's not really anything going on, so don't worry about them too much. Most of the stuff is up here on the streets and in the buildings. Anyways, let's run through this alleyway again. Oh no, it's these weird guys. <laughs> yeah, good thing I didn't get mugged again. Um, so yeah, once you come up here and you fought them all, they will give you the item, which is the amulet coin. The amulet coin is an awesome item. You can attach it to your Pokemon, and you will get double the money from every battle. So that's really cool. Um, anyways, they're going to do some cool dances, and that is it. So like I said, next time we're going to be going into that building, fighting all those trainers, and after that we'll probably check out the gym. So we got a lot down here in Castelia City. Um, but there's still a lot more to do, so we'll see you guys all next time.